Okay, so now in this example, I'm gonna kind of shift gears. Rather than talking about all these different functions, sine, x squared, x cubed, absolute value, square root, we're just gonna deal with the um, just general h of x to represent our function, okay? So we're just gonna talk about h of x and we're going to apply the transformations. Now, here's where it comes really important because this is kind of, um, you know, arb not arbitrary, but uh, ambiguous in the case that we don't really know what the function is h of x, but again, it doesn't matter what the function is. The same, uh, whatever the operations, they are going to affect any function the exact same way. And that was kind of the purpose of the, you know, first two examples to see that. So if I'm given a function h of x, and I want to write that function h of x, which a vertical shift of up one, then let's just kind of write, let's just say, you know, x equals one, and like that's inside the function, right? So if I'm going to have a vertical shift of up one, that means I need to add a one on the outside. If I'm going to have a vertical shift of two units to the right, that means I need to subtract a subtract two inside the function. So that means I'm going to need to subtract two inside of this function. So I can write h of x is going to equal x minus two and then plus one. Yeah, I need to write that as the, did I not write that? Oh, I think I need to, I messed those up. Oops, okay. So that's gonna be, yeah, so your h of x, sorry, here's your h of x, and then you're gonna add one, and I forgot to write the, actually what I was thinking, sorry about that. Uh, so I have h of x equals h times x minus two plus one, all right? For the next example, we have a, uh, so I have my h of x, and that equals h of x, right? But now we need to apply the transformations. So I have a vertical shift down two, so that's gonna be subtracted two on the outside. I have a vertical stretch of four, so that's gonna be, I'm gonna multiply by a four on the outside, and I'm gonna reflect about the x-axis, which is gonna be multiplying by a negative one, again, on the outside. So my new function here is going to be Uh, let's see, that's going to be a multiply by negative as well as a 4, so that's going to be a negative 4, h of x. There's nothing that's happening inside the function, and then minus 2, okay? h of x plus 1, and then all the transformations, yeah. Uh, for the next one, I have a horizontal shift left, so that means that's going to be inside the function. I'll just maybe write this. That's inside a vertical compression. Um, that's going to be outside and a vertical shift up one, that's gonna be outside. So it's really important to like know the difference. Is your transformation inside or outside? And again, anything that's happening horizontally is going to be inside. Anything that's happening vertically is going to be outside. So if I have my function h of x and I want to apply a vertical compression, a factor of one half, that's gonna be multiplying, right? Because that's like a dilation. And then, so I'm gonna have one half h of x now you can see I have a horizontal shift unit, one unit to the left, so that means that's gonna be plus one. And then I have a sure vertical shift one unit up, so that's gonna be plus one on the outside. So it's very important to kind of understand is your shifting gonna be up or down. Uh, next example, reflection about the y-axis. Um, so reflection about the y-axis, that's gonna be inside. I have a vertical shift down to, that's gonna be outside and a horizontal stretch, a factor of four, that's inside. Okay, so I have my function h of x. I have vertical shift outside, I'll do that as my k. So inside, I'm reflecting the y-axis, so that's gonna be a negative, but it's gonna be a negative horizontal stretch of four, so it'd be a negative four x, and then down two, so that's gonna be minus two on the outside. The next one is a horizontal compression factor of three and a horizontal shift of two units. So this one gets pretty, this one can get tricky because if you remember from the beginning, when we have a horizontal compression as well as a horizontal shift, we gotta make sure we write it in the factored out form. So these are both inside, these are both inside uh, transformations. So I'm gonna write it like this though. Just remember this, um, this format, B times X minus H, okay? So this is the format I'm gonna wanna use and I'll explain here why in just a second. So if I'm writing this answer, I have h of x equals my b, here's my horizontal compression, a factor of three, 
So that's going to be h of 3 times my horizontal shift two units to the right. So that's going to be x minus 2. Okay. Now, you don't typically see the equation like this. What you'll typically see the equation written is like this. This multiplied, 3x minus 6. But it's very important for us to understand this equation is, does not give us a horizontal transformation of 6 units to the right. This equation gives us a horizontal transformation of 3 units to the right. And the reason why is because b is affecting that shift. So if you go ahead and graph a function, any function, with 3x minus 6 as far as on the inside, you'll see that the graph is only being shifted um, two units to the right. So that's something that's very important to see, that you know this would be the making sure you're writing it. And this only really needs to be done when you have a b and an h, where b is not uh, actually b, uh, it's negative or not. Um, last but not least is, now we're doing this again, right? So we have a reflection about the y-axis and a horizontal shift two units to the right. So again, doing the same thing. I'm gonna have a reflection about the y-axis, so that's gonna be a negative one. And then two units to the right would be an x minus two. Now, I could simplify that as h of negative x, which would basically just be and distribute this. Okay, so that would be your simplified answer um, to be able to understand the horizontal shift two units to the right, as well as a reflection of the y-axis. So there you go, on to the next one.